Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we'll start our next session here. That is regarding ER and ER to relational mapping. Uh, and uh, today we will also discuss that what are the ways in which we can relate various kinds of entities. So we have uh, primarily three relationships. One is called one is to one, one is called one is to many, and the third one is many is to many relationships. So today we will discuss that how we can apply various rules uh, regarding these relationships. So we, uh, the outline is that we have to cover three uh, mapping types. One is called mapping of binary relationship. One is to one. The step two is mapping of binary relationship. One is to N. And the third is mapping of binary relationship. M is to N. So here we start with uh, the mapping approaches. But remember that whenever we are targeting towards mapping relationships, we have to, uh, we have to determine or we have to identify some goals. And obviously that goals have to be followed whenever we have those mappings, number one. We have to preserve all information that includes all attributes. It, uh, it means that whatever the schema we have, uh, whatever the entities we have, which we have represented in our uh, ER model or EER model. So not only those entities, but also all related attributes must be represented while we are going for the mapping. Number two, we need to know what are the constraints which are involved in these relationships. So here we have to look forward and see that what are the constraints and whenever we are going for the mapping approaches, we have to preserve all those constraints. For instance, that sometimes we might have relationships which is restricted. For example, one entity can only have a relationship with other entity with a fixed number. For example, of maximum cardinality, one is to 10 or one is to five or otherwise. So we have to, uh, we have to focus on that while, while we are mapping, it, it uh, our constraints and also all the related information must be preserved. So here we move on further. And just for the sake of the problem, uh, let's assume that we have that schema. Although during my lecture, I will not uh, totally focus on this schema because while we are discussing examples, we might have uh, different examples as well, or we can generate our own scenarios or situations. Because if you change a situation, obviously the, uh, the the mapping approach will change. So here is one of the scenario, and in that scenario, uh, uh, we have employees which have been uh, working in certain departments, and obviously those employees are working on various projects. They have dependents as well. They have some sort of supervisions which you can see and there are attributes which are being represented. So in today's session, we are only interested, we are only focused on the relationships, whether it is one is to one, one is too many or many is too many. And we are not focusing on other uh, other things which are related to it. For instance, uh, might be we talk about uh, weak entities or total or partial participation. So here we are just focusing on the relationships. And in the coming lecture, we will cover all other aspects. 
So in this example, I have just uh, made a little change and I have included another entity, although it is not represented in the diagram, but while you are listening this lecture, you might consider it that let's assume that those employees are also being given uh, or assigned uh, vehicles at different levels. So here, for instance, that uh, vehicle uh, is associated with employee. And the assumption is that the employee can have a single uh, vehicle, not more than one vehicle. So we have that assumption that vehicle and uh, employee have the one-to-one -one relationship. So we'll focus on only one is to one, one is to many and many to many relationship. So here we will consider three relationships, one between employee and vehicle. We, we have just added here and uh, secondly, the employee and the department. And the third one is the employee and project because it covers all these three kinds of representations. So we'll coming towards one is to one relationship type. So that you might take as a step one uh, in your mapping algorithm. And whenever we say that in a binary relationship, as we have discussed and as you have gone through with various lectures already, that you know that when we talk about entities, we have different kinds of relationships. Uh, uh, it might be a binary relationship among the entities. It might be a unary relationship between uh, among the entity. And also it is possible that we have an array relationship which might exist among entities. But here, since we are talking about one is to one and one is to many and many is to many relationships, so we will focus here on binary relationships. We talk about two entities and their relationships. So here, if you talk about step one, and let's assume it's a binary relationship, one is to one. So if we have a one is to one relationship, let's look into the diagram. Here we also have one example. If you see this diagram, that the employee manages departments. So here you can see that there is one is to one relationship. Whenever we say one is to one relationship, it means we are referring to one is to one correspondence. It means that there is an instance of an employee that might be related to an instance of a department, but it but the relationship is one is to one so it means that it, as per the er model or our mini world which is described what we have uh, uh, what we understood is that employee cannot manages more than one department so it is some sort of a business constraint or a business rule so this is one example of one is to one. We will see that how we can deal with that. And the another example is that let's assume for a moment that we have an other entity entity available is there on this diagram, although it is not represented right now, but I have just made an assumption that there are vehicles and the company wants to keep track the, uh, the data of vehicles for example, uh, the registration number, the make, the model, and type as well. So some of the attributes which are essential about vehicles and they want to keep that data in the database. So, so the employee has one-to-one -one relationship with vehicle as well. And here in, in this example, the employee has a one-to-one -one relationship with departments. So keeping these two examples in your mind, we move forward. So there are three possible ways in which we can resolve this issue. Number one, to add a foreign key. So whenever we have a binary relationship, so we need to have a foreign key. We have to decide for a foreign key. So in the case of one-to-one -one relationship, always remember that either of the primary key of, of, of one entity can be 
can be put it to in uh, in uh, to the other entity and vice versa for instance for instance employee key can be introduced into the department key and vice versa as well so both possibilities are there whenever we talk about uh, the placement of a foreign key so that is why we say that choose one of the relations say s and include a foreign key in s in the primary key of t it is better to choose an entity type with total participation in r in the role of s what does it mean so whenever we talk about participations we have discussed this in our earlier lectures as well so participation refers to refers to uh, double line as you see in this diagram so wherever in the relationship we have a double line it means it means it represents total participation so wherever we have a single line it means it represents it represents a partial participation so in this relationship between employee and the department employee and the department here you can see that we have one to one relationship one to one relationship and you can see that here we have a total participation and here we have a partial participation so one approach is it is better to choose an entity type with total participation in r in the role of s so here in that, then that particular example, uh, that is one is to one, manages is met by choosing the participating entity type department to serve in the role of S because its particip participation in the manages relation type is total as we have observed. So we can put the key over here of the employee so that it can manage this issue. And let's assume, let's take another example of vehicle let's assume that we have a vehicle entity over here and we have an employee entity over here and let's assume that reg number is a primary key of a vehicle and ssn is a primary key of an employee and they have one to one relationship so what happened is what is the good option the good option is that employee is basically represents the total participation so here we can put reg number in the employee table as a foreign key. So this is another representation of one is to one relationship. That is the first option, which is called a foreign key approach. The second option we have is called merge relation. That is an alternative mapping of one to one relationship type. And it is possible when we merge two entity types. So let's assume that we have two entities and there is one-to-one -one correspondence and we believe that it is not necessary to have a foreign key relationship rather than we can merge these relations together. This is only possible where, where either the, both the participations are total, number one, and number two, let's assume a particular entity only has a single attribute which is uh, which is important in that particular problem. So if that is the scenario, only then you opt for merge relation. Otherwise, it is not recommended to have a merge relation. The third option is, a, is called a cross-reference or a relationship relation, or in other words, to build a, a third relation and all those one-to-one -one correspondence should be put in the third relation. For example, here in this diagram, employee manages department. So it is quite obvious from the relationship that all employees are not managing. So instead of putting this information here or this information here, you can have a separate relation and we can put only those employees who are managing the department. For example, there might be nine or 10 departments, but there are maybe thousands of employees. So it is quite possible that we can have a third relation manages and we can have the employee and department keys over there. And in that manner, we have 
the cross reference validation so it is up to us while we are mapping how we can do it okay we will move to the second step which is a relationship type of one is to one one is to many pardon so we have a one to many relationship type so for each regular binary one is to many relationship of type r identify the relation s that represent the participating entity type at the end side of the relationship type so in other words so whenever we have such a relationship where we have one is to many relationship so it is better it is recommendable in fact it, uh, that you can take the primary key of the entity with, which is at the one side and take that primary key and to put and put it in the many side entity for instance for instance in our diagram here employee has a department has a relationship with employee which is one is to many here you can see it means a department might have one or more employees and employee work in one and only one department so there is a relationship of one is to many so the good good solution to this problem is that that because department is on one side and employee is on many side so so take the key of the department table and put it here as you see in this diagram as well so in this table employee that dno is treated as a foreign key unlike one is to one relationship uh, the one is to many relations in one is to many relationship the vice versa is not allowed it means that if you have one to many relationship you cannot put employee ssn to the department table so this will not work in the case of in the case of one is to many relationship so the other alternative for one is to many relationship is a cross reference relation as we have discussed in one is to one case as well but this is uh, most of the time this is not required this is only but this is a possibility that we can build a cross reference relation instead of putting a prime a foreign key uh, on, in the other entity so in a specific situation you can opt for a cross reference relation as well but we would always prefer as we have discussed earlier on that we'll take the primary key of the one side and we'll put it into the many side relation as we have discussed in the example here uh, the relationship that exists among department and employee the third type relationship is called many is to many relationship and many is to many relationship is a complex relationship and in that particular relationship we definitely have some attributes which uh, which are represented in our er or er diagram with the relationship or a or symbol or normally with a diagonal uh, with a diamond symbol why because those attributes can uh, cannot be represented in either of the table for example for example we we just refer to the diagram the er diagram and here you can see that employee has a relationship of many to many with project so here in this scenario you can observe there is one attribute which is called hours which is actually uh, you can see is represented with the relationship the reason is that hours cannot be represented in employee let's suppose if i put hours in employee then it is not clear that for which project i am referring to and let's assume that if i put hours in project it does not uh, reflect that for which employee i am referring to so therefore that has many to many relationship 
therefore that hour is an attribute which is related to the relationship so what is the solution the solution is in the case of uh, many to many relationship we have to create a cross reference relation or a third relation and that third relation sometimes also called intermediate relation or even we call it a cross reference relation as well so here the solution is that we come out with an other table that is called works on and we can have the keys of both the relations participating relations into this particular third relation which is called a cross reference relation and all those attributes which are part of the relationship which cannot be defined uh, be can be represented with either of the table can be a part of this relation so here let's see what happens let's take this uh, diagram as well and you can understand so we have a relationship of one many to many with employee and project so we take the SSN from here and we put it in the works on. We take the project number, which is a key, let's suppose in the project, we put it in here. They both become the primary key of this table. And SSN will be a foreign key for employee. And PNO is a foreign key for project. And we have added the attribute which cannot be defined in either of the relations. So this is the representation of one is to one, one is to many, and many is to many relationships. Thank you for understanding. Good luck.